So we're looking today at the subject of godly confidence. Godly confidence. Um, uh, Matt spoke last week about getting out of the boat. Um, and this, and this, this is really on our hearts at the moment. To encourage God's people to be confident in stepping out in the things of God in our lives. It's so important in our day where there's actually a lot of confusion and a lot of sense of insignificance that we, we do battle, don't we, with the anxieties of life and the complexities of life. There are so many obstacles in our way to stop us entering fully into being the people God's called us to be. It's hard to navigate, isn't it? It's not always easy. Uh, but this call to godly confidence is so important and it starts from the place of really looking unto Jesus. It's not putting confidence in the flesh, it's actually putting confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Christ lives in you. If you are a believer and have given your life to Christ, then Jesus lives in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I really believe now is the time for us here at St. Mary's and the wider church to step into the power of the Holy Spirit in a way that we may have never seen before. Or certainly in a way that we may, uh, you know, never have experienced before. I was thinking as we were worshiping today, you know, the only reason I'm standing before you here now is because of what God did in my life Like in 1991, when I first stepped out, yeah, when I gave, when I, I remember going, I remember going forward at a meeting, I've told you about it many times, that God, the fire was nearly out in my life, I, I was a Christian, but I was pretty dull in my Christian faith, and I knew I needed to be reignited in the things of God. And the reason I'm here today is because that first time I stepped out. Now, I've had to step out hundreds or thousands of times since then because it never, ever stops. We never, ever graduate from stepping out. (laughs) We have to keep going. You know, even getting up today to speak, you know, uh, it may look fine, but I get nervous when I come up to speak, rightly so. Because these are the things of God that God wants to do. These are things of eternal consequence in our lives. And and, uh, it's so important. You know, it says in Psalm 27, being confident of this, that, uh, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God wants us to have confidence in him. Confidence in God. Not, but not only a confidence in God, but a confidence that we can step out. So it's not just theoretical. It isn't just between your ears that you have confidence in God as a sort of idea. It is a lifestyle. It is a way of living. God calls us to this place. Um, and I really believe, honestly, from my boots, <laughs> I believe in the amazing potential in this church family for the things of God to break out in ordinary believers like us. Right from the very first day when I came to look at this church before I'd even been appointed, one of the core convictions that I caught very quickly was that God wants to do something wonderful here. God wants to do something amazing through us. And that is true, and I've never lost that. I've always, when I walk around, you know, uh, and, you know, I sometimes do it better than others, but honestly, when I walk around, I see, the, I see in my spirit, it's not like, I, I'm obviously not very good at seeing, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> I'm probably better at seeing in the spirit <laughs> with my actual eyes. But uh, I see, what I see when I look at you are bright saints of God. Why do I see that? As the Bible says, you are the light of the world. In Matthew's gospel, you are the light of the world. Obviously, Jesus also said, I am the light of the world. But he also, Jesus said, you are as well. You are bright ones. You are 
when you've given your life to Christ, you are holy, you are chosen. Before the foundation of the world, God chose you. You're not here by accident. You are part of this community for such a time as this. You are beloved people of God. Honestly, I wish we could all know how deeply loved we are from heaven. I wish we could all feel the burning heart of Father God that is so in love with, with you as his people. God loves you much, much, much more than I think any of us have really comprehended. If we really had, if we, if we really did comprehend that, I think we would be living on a different level uh, because we would be, you know, for a start, we'd be unoffendable. <laughs> we'd be deeply secure. We would, be, we would have such a foundation for life that maybe we don't feel we have. But it's available to us, friends. This love of God, it's not something we earn or work up to or try and get a bit, if I could just be a bit better by next week, then I'll be okay. No, it is already paid for, done in full. Jesus has done all we need to really encounter his love, his glory, his blessing. You are loved. You are you are called by, the, by name. You are chosen. You are holy in his sight. Uh, you are anointed witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you have been given everything you need for life and godliness. You are commissioned to be his witnesses in this dark world. You are sent and you are gifted wonderfully abundantly by the Lord for all that God wants you to do. And you will be different from the person sitting next to you. And so we mustn't compare ourselves or think, I'm not as good. You know, we do this all the time. I'm not as good as that person. I'm no good at remembering Bible verses or I couldn't do what they do, you know. And often these things just pull us back and actually we don't need to do what they do. Do what God's called you to do. Be the, be the Christian that Jesus has called and gifted and chosen you and anointed you and given you all the foundation that you need to step out Amen. in his love. Step out in his love. This isn't about blind, you know, sort of semi-stupid faith. Uh, that is, you know, kind of for idiots. This, this is faith that is built on a solid foundation of the love of God, of relationship with God. You can trust him in your stepping out as, as, as you do led by the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus, I believe, wants to call us to his, his people individually and together corporately into a building a culture of confidence here where we can step out and into the things of God more and more together. It's going to take us doing that. Um, yeah, that's, that's really on my heart for us. Godly confidence that uh, uh, you are full. You are you're so full of kingdom potential. You know, like a seed, like um, God has planted so many seeds in us that he wants us to go out and spread those seeds of his love and his kingdom. It might be through random acts of kindness. It may be through listening or, or, or maybe through declaring something of his word or praying for someone or, or practically serving your neighbor or in your workplace. I really sense the Lord wanting to put his hand on people in your workplace. I know that workplace isn't always a place course where you can be you know really out there you know in every workplace about your faith but you know you can live your faith really powerfully even you though you might not be able to kind of preach or something in your workplace I get that but you can through your life and through the presence of the spirit influence and impact your workplace more than you might know 
because Christ lives in you. You go around like a bright one in a dark world and people see you and they will see genuine holiness, yeah? Genuine brightness, genuine love, purity, a uh, heart after God. This fragrance that you walk around with will be so powerful. It will be the fragrance of life to some who will, who will receive that. And it's the fragrance of death to others who will reject it. But you will make a difference. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Friends, you are significant to what God wants to do now in this land, in, in, in Epping Forest, in your workplace, in your home, in your sphere, with your friends. God has called you by name and set you apart for him. Uh, and it all starts when, like uh, we just sung, you know, you are beautiful beyond description. It starts when we see how good God is, how glorious he is, and then we realize what an amazing purpose he has for us. And then, you know, really, it's like this where, of course, I am, like we all are, we're so co conscious of our weakness. We're so conscious of the disqualifications. We're so conscious of the problems and the reasons why not. And those are on the one side, okay? Let's be real about this. Of course they are. But my prayer is today that even though those things are all there, that actually we will become more conscious of eternity, more conscious of one day that you will stand before Christ and he will say, and, and he, I want, when I get to that day of eternity, I, I want to be able to say to the Lord, Lord, I fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've stepped out. I've done what you called me to do. I didn't take the talents you gave me and bury them in the ground. God, here, here I am and the fruit that you have given me. Yeah? To get into heaven one day, not by the skin of your teeth with only you to show for it, but to get to heaven and have something else to show for it. We don't want to be clouds without rain, friends. You know, we want to be those who actually bear fruit in the kingdom of God. And there's only one word to bear fruit, and that is to step out in some way and sow seed. And if we want to start bearing fruit, we need to start sowing some seeds in life and stepping out of the boat and becoming the people that Christ died to make us and rose again to empower us to be. That is the true way of worshiping God. It's by being the people that Jesus died and rose again to make, to, to present to his Father. That's what God wants from us today, friends. And so, yes, we've got all these issues, but I want us to become more conscious of eternity, more conscious of the love of God, more conscious of all that God's given us, so that basically, yes, we do have this tension in us where we feel weak, but we become, we allow the, the love of God to become more present to us than our consciousness of our weakness, yeah? That the love of God will become, will compel us. Like the apostle said, you know, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. You know, I can't, can't cope without <laughs> giving my life to Christ. How can I live and hold it all to myself? How can I really name the name of Christ and not step out? That's, what the apostle, that's how the apostle Paul lived his life. And what we are all called into. This is when church begins to change nations. It will come about through ordinary Christians stepping out in ordinary ways. I'm not saying we've all got to sort of step out and suddenly something super dramatic will happen. It, it won't probably, but something will happen. Uh, something will happen. One life at a time, something will happen. That's how things change. You have opportunities that no one else has. And so do I. God is calling you today, friend. And all of us. He is really calling us. There is kingdom potential in you. And are you and I really walking in that? And that's what the Apostle Paul wanted to share with Timothy. Because in this book... This is the last letter that Paul wrote, period. From, he wrote it from prison. 
He wrote it to Timothy, his, uh, his disciple. And Timothy was young, and Timothy had a lot of issues that Timothy probably felt disqualified him. He was pretty, he, he often got sick, he felt young, um, he didn't feel particularly competent. We mustn't get the idea that all the people in the Bible thought that they were fit for purpose. Most of them didn't. And Timothy was no different. But the Apostle Paul wrote to him here. It was about 66 AD. And the other thing that Paul really conscious of when he writes this letter, Paul knows Emperor Nero is on the throne and Nero uh, is, was the most brutal persecutor of Christians. It was under Emperor Nero that Paul was beheaded. And Paul, writing from prison, knows that his time is near. So what would you say, what would you write if this was your last letter to someone who's pastoring the church? And you, you know, like Paul, you'd, you know, you imagine, the, imagine his mindset as he's writing this letter, conscious that he's going he's gonna to soon part this, this time. And what does he want to pass on to his his um, disciple here. I want to focus on these verses. Verse 6. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Friends, these words were on Paul's heart, some of the first words he wrote. It's worth reading from that mindset of his last letter. I've been reading through a lot of the pastoral epistles just recently and really being fed by them. Uh, because of this heart of the pastor's heart of the Apostle Paul. So, you know, we often do feel held back, and Timothy felt held back often as well. We can feel, I mean, I'm sure if we were to go around and describe why we may not be fully stepping out into the things of God, we might talk about feeling often that lack of confidence. Maybe there's a sense of, insecurity in us if we're honest Uh, what would people think if I stepped out in some way and when I think about stepping out I'm talking about um, I'm not just talking about public speaking or doing something at the front that's that's, that's one thing but it's only one there's so many ways that people can step out it might be you need to step out into getting to know your neighbour it might be you need to step out in using a spiritual gift that has not that has not really been used. For example, giving words of prophecy. Sometimes people say to me, I had this word that I was going to give. You know, this is after the service. But I wasn't really sure if it was from God. And I'm like, (laughs) you should have cut, you know, know, all due respect, but I I would love them to have actually given it, okay? You give it. You don't have to be the one standing with the mic if you don't want to. I'll give it for you if you'd prefer. But, give it it might be that God's called you to particular court you know justice issues and that maybe you or or, or all sorts of different things it's going to be different for everybody that's good we need that yeah we don't need everybody to be preachers we need people who are pastors evangelists teachers Uh, we need people in all forms of ministry administration worship um doing the things you're doing in your workplace, in the power of God, those, all of these things. So when I'm talking about stepping out, I'm really thinking of only you can answer the question as how you can step out. Uh, and if you really want to, God will show you what that looks like for you. But it may be that insecurity stops you. Do you know, one of the biggest things I think that we feel is just the fear of getting it wrong. You know? Um, we don't want to get it wrong. That was a big block for me when I used to be petrified of praying out loud. <laughs> you know, the fear of getting it wrong, rehearsing the whole prayer in my head so that it made sense and I didn't look foolish. 
Um, how many of us have had that experience? Yeah. We don't want to look foolish. Of course we don't. I mean, who's up for that? But, you know, it's the fear of getting it wrong. I just want to burst that bubble in the name of Jesus. We will never grow unless we get it wrong. That's the only way to learn. We need to have more testimonies of mistakes we've made. <laughs> How we didn't get it right. It's okay. <laughs> God is big enough. The, king, the kingdom will not collapse if we get something wrong. <laughs> uh, faith is spelt T-R-Y. <laughs> Try. Have a go. Learn. When we ride our bikes, did we, when you rode your bike for the first time, did you just get on it and ride? <laughs> no. We, you know, our parents held the saddle and they, and they helped us along and they were like, pedal! <laughs> and uh, we fell off more than we, you know, and eventually we learned how to ride our bikes. And so it is with ministry. So it is with the things of God. We're going to get it wrong sometimes. I get it wrong all the time. Honestly, I, I, I can't tell you, honestly, I can't tell you the number of times I don't know what to do next, okay? I don't know what to do next. That's why, and we're going to be saying, I don't know what to do next a lot. The more you depend on God, the more you're going to start saying, I don't know what to do next. Amen? Amen. Because if we know what to do next, we're not really depending on God. We're just going in our own natural strength. We need to be saying, Lord, you lead me. Lord, what do you want from me? Lord, the person in front of me, how can I love them? You know? Step out. Talk to new people. How does, the, how does a culture of hospitality grow in a church? It grows by people stepping out and people inviting each other into friendship. Yeah? Let's get honestly. How, 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 how real do we need to get? Many people struggle in churches with not knowing people and feeling like, I don't know anyone. I don't have friends in the church. So then, I want to encourage you Beloved, step out and build bridges, build friendships. These things are always make us vulnerable. They all, when you're starting to build a friendship, you always think, will they, will they want to know me? Am I worth knowing? The, it, it just feeds so much of our insecurities, which is why we don't do it, which is why we prefer to just stay withdrawn. But you know what? A church that grows will be stepping out. Uh, none of us get it right all the time. And I just want to encourage you to, to please do it. The fear of getting it wrong uh, is a big one. So let's just look here. How do we grow in godly confidence from 2 Timothy? For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So first we need to stir up. And in, a, in an old translation, of the Bible, it says, stir up the gift of God that is in you. Think of it like this. I've got a real fire at home. And um, in, in the winter, when we light it, you have to keep feeding it. And you know what it's like when the fire is going dim and you, it's almost out. And you have to stir up the fire again. Stir up the gift of God. I wonder, is there any, any of us here today and we feel like, if we're honest, you know, the fire is almost, is struggling. It's struggling to keep going. And I want to say to you today, stir up. Stir up. St may God stir you up. Stir up the gift of God. Get the bellows out and, and fan the flames. Get into the word and prayer and worship. Uh, begin to feed your soul with good, the goodness of God. And stir up your spiritual gifts. Sometimes we wait for God to do something in us. And God is waiting for us. <laughs> you know, I wonder sometimes what we expect to happen. If you want to receive the gift of prophecy, it won't happen. You know, it won't happen that, okay, it might, but it probably won't happen that God will say to you, you know, you'd be waiting and suddenly, thus saith the Lord, now I'm going to use you as a prophet to the nations. You know, that's probably not going to happen. Some of us are sort of waiting for that big moment where we sort of get zapped by God and suddenly now we know we're commissioned. We're, you know, we're, we're, are we waiting for that moment? It probably isn't going to happen. It happens to like a tiny number of people. 
Um, but most of the time, you get an impression in your mind, or God puts a scripture in your mind or a picture. And what do you need to do? You need to step out. <laughs> and it won't be, there it is. It's 100% guaranteed. <laughs> you know? <laughs> this is the Lord speaking. Don't make any mistake. I'm totally guaranteeing this word. <laughs> you know, that doesn't ever happen. You have to step out. It might not be. <laughs> step out. Singing in the spirit. Praying out loud. Uh, sharing your faith with a friend. Uh, getting to know your neighbor in the love of God. Um, a random acts of kindness to people in the name of Jesus. All these things take courage. And we need to stir up. So we, we shouldn't just be waiting passively expecting God to do stuff, that God is going to initiate it, okay? Sometimes we have to say, Lord, I'm open, because God might be waiting for you. And that's because it's a partnership. That's because it's a relationship with him. And the closer, he wants you to get closer to him. That's why God often, um, you know, whispers to his friends. Sometimes he shouts to his enemies. He, he whispers to his friends so that we'll get closer to him. And it calls us closer Friends, don't just wait uh, for something to happen. Step out. And if the fire has gone out, then stir it up again. Stir it up. I don't always feel like reading my Bible. I don't always feel like going to the prayer meeting. Let's be honest. I don't always feel, if I'm going to do some outreach, I feel afraid. I feel nervous. When, when someone... You, you, you know that this opportunity is like literally there. I get this butterflies. I get the heart, you know, pounding. Because you know, oh, I've got to step out in just a moment. Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? <laughs> sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But I always wish I did. And that's where, the, that's where we need to stir up. Stir up the gift of God that is in you. And also I want to encourage us to, he says... Fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Did you know you can receive spiritual gifts through the laying on of hands? So this morning, I'd like to offer prayer ministry to lay on hands for people to receive spiritual gifts and stir up the gift of God. Amen? Okay? Uh, it's available for free. Uh, <laughs> straight after. Uh, we're going to pray for people. Because we believe that there's an impartation. God, through Paul, gave Timothy gifts. And sometimes that happens. But we can receive gifts in many ways, but this is one of the ways. Then he goes on and he says, not only stir up, uh, but, uh, but step up. For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. It's interesting. This is not about personality types, by the way. Uh, it's not, obviously there's introverted people. The, the older I get, the more introverted I get. <laughs> um, but uh, it's not whether you're introverted or extroverted. This timidness is not from God, okay? If you're introverted, that's fine. That's just one of the, a God-given personality trait. It's, it's absolutely fine. But ext extroverted people or introverted people can all be timid. In other words, you know, you're, you're giving in to fear, you're giving, timidness is, a, is an atmosphere in your life where you are withdrawing away. You're going away instead of leaning in. God doesn't give you a spirit that makes you timid, friends. God is not the God who brings fear into our lives. We, need to, we, will, we all feel that timidness, but it's not from God. Okay? He gives us the spirit of love. That's why I said to us, even when we're feeling timid, and we all will, it's, it's acknowledging I'm timid, but love, I've got more love than timid. <laughs> I have more power than timid, more self-discipline than timid, and God will, and, and that's why God will win. God's going to, I'm going to step out. It's not that we're going to be ever free from that feeling of timidity, friends, uh, that will always be there. It's a battle. Um, we never just, you know, there's never going to be a day in our lives until heaven where we don't experience this battle around stepping out. 
Um, it's going to be there, but we just need to let love and, and, and power and self-discipline increase in our lives. That's what God's given us. So if we want to start stepping out, we can pray, God, fill me with love. Fill me with your power. And Jesus, I pray, I choose the, to walk in self-discipline. That's this thing about stirring up. It won't happen by accident. It's not like falling off a log. It won't happen, you know, just spontaneously out of nowhere. Nothing like this happens. It doesn't happen by osmosis. You know, you don't get to know your Bible by just holding it. You have to read it. <laughs> uh, you don't grow as a Christian just by hoping it will happen one day. <laughs> you grow as a Christian by stepping out, by doing the disciplines that are life-giving from the Holy Spirit, prayer, scripture. These are foundations, worship, uh, love, serving. These are all basic. This is like Christianity, A, B, C, you know. This is, um, this is so basic, but for the lack of some of it, we struggle. So we need to allow, we need to step up uh, not allowing timidity to, to come in. Um, but um, as he says here, the spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. That's also the reason why I always encourage us to keep praying, come Holy Spirit in our lives, because that's what the spirit does. It's impossible to be filled with the spirit and not, uh, not step out in some way. The spirit is a river. He will, he will flow. And if you welcome the river into your life, you will start flowing in that river. And that's just how it works. The last thing, and I'm just nearly done. Stir up, step up, and then stand up here. This next verse says, And do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather rejoice with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. And it's just as Matt said earlier. Don't expect this to be easy, you know? I wish I could tell you it's going to be brilliant and you won't have any problems with this. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be right. So Paul says here, you've got to, it's going to take courage. Something in you needs to stand up. Where are the men and women of courage? The Bible actually says things about cowards, did you know that? The cowardly will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Did you know that? It's pretty tough, isn't it? Wow. It's, it's in there. This is courage. This is going to take courage. But God will give you the courage that you need. But he says here, do not be ashamed. So basically, Paul is an embarrassment at that moment in time. Lots of people have turned away from Paul. He's in prison. He feels a bit of a loser. And he says, don't be ashamed of my chains. Paul says this also in Philippians uh, chapter 1. He talks about how his chains have given confidence to the believers in Philippi to suffer. If Paul can suffer, if Jesus suffered, we will suffer. And it will not be easy. But friends, that's why we don't live for this world if you're living for time, you, you don't want to do any of this. It's if you're living for eternity that this matters. Live for eternity. Live beyond this life. Have a vision for eternity. Have a vision of heaven and what God and the, all the people that God wants you to bring there because of the seeds that you sow in this life. Have a vision for eternity. Do not be ashamed of we don't want to be ashamed of one another or of the Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God. Now is the time that we are living in an age of intimidation where ever, everybody will, what are people going to do if we say we believe the Bible? You get mocked. People say, how can you believe in a God like that? And they come at you with all sorts of clever sounding things. And the, basically the thing is, back off. You know, that's what they're saying. Back off. How, how can you believe in God? We will be mocked if we believe in God or believe in his word. 
But uh, if they persecuted the prophets and if they persecuted Jesus, we will be persecuted. But that's why he invites him to suffer with him uh, and, and for, the, for the power of God. This is so, so important, friends. Risk is involved as we step out. But it's worth it. You know, what are we stepping out for? Love. We're stepping out for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're stepping out for the true kingdom of God. Real justice, real peace, real power, real reconciliation. All the works of the kingdom of God, of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is all worth it. It's just not going to be easy. Amen? Uh, So let's, you know, it looked to all the world, just like it looked to Jesus dying on the cross that he'd failed. Look at Paul, the end of his life. What's he got to show for it? He's in prison. He's about to be executed. The world thinks he's a loser. But we, we know different, don't we? We know different. We want to be those who say, I want God to say to me when I get to heaven, well done, good, faithful servant. And this is how it works. I'm telling you in advance. You'll remember it one day in eternity. Just let you know. I told you. <laughs> and it's what you do with it now, all right? I'm innocent <laughs> of all. No, seriously. I don't, mean it. I don't mean it that way. I just, I just mean my heart. My heart is enlarged for this church to be all Jesus wants us to be. So many churches up and down our land are timid. Uh, It doesn't mean we're brash on the other side of that. It just means we're bold with the love of God, in the love of God. Uh, And I I just long that my brothers and sisters, all I want, I would... All I long for is for you to step out in the things of God that God's got for you. Um, And only you know what they are. Amen. So let's stand, if you're able. Let's stand.